Hey, Josh, how are you? Hi, Katie. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much. Oh, well, thank you so much for taking the time today to talk about the film. Must be, after, especially after the past few years, must be exciting for you to get out there and actually have a project like this to talk about. Absolutely. Um, it was really, it was awesome to shoot. It, I mean, you know, we shot it in uh, early 2021 and it was the first time, you know, I had actually been around, out and around people because I was born and raised in Los Angeles and I live, you know, where I live. It's we we were in lockdown for a very long time so it was nice to be around um other people especially creator creative type and while still being you know cautious and careful yeah 100 percent, and such an interesting film to watch i thought particularly with obviously your character miller you know she's part of this team and they are so committed to this cause but then i thought it was interesting to see that they have doubts as well with what they're doing so what was in most interesting for you about getting into the mindset of a character like this one? Um, for me, Miller, I, I think she's, um, well, I'm a, so I grew up a gamer and into technology and, you know, cryptocurrency and NFTs, all of it. But I think to me, she's more, she's like the technical genius, computer genius behind it all, but she's also very internal and very observant. Um, and it's funny, when I went, met with the director, in when we were we shot in Georgia there's something I do when I'm being creative I don't know why but like I have to I I have to like twirl my hair and pace <laughs> I know that sounds weird but so I gave her I don't know I haven't seen the movie yet uh but I gave her the character a mannerism to distract her almost from her mind because she's often like in her head and something that just like keeps her calm is this like this, you know, distraction or this, I don't know why I, I, I sort of went there and, and I spoke with the director about it. I was like, I, Katie Cassidy paces and twirls, but I think Miller, like, I don't know, there's this thing and with, she's got this thing, I don't know, it might sound strange, but she's definitely, you know, I think very self-aware, but everyone, they all have trust issues, you know, they don't know who to trust, who's on whose side, and she's a badass. Oh, 100%. She she is such a really rich, interesting character. And I feel like a lot of these sort of like CIA spy type stories, often very male dominated. So was it important that obviously as one of the film's only like female leads that this be a character you could maybe bring some of your own ideas to so you could flesh her out and make her feel like a real Thank person? you. Thank you for the acknowledgement, Josh. Let me just say it was not easy being the only female actor mainly a lot of crew male crew on, on set except for annie alonza thank goodness she came uh three weeks in who is my homegirl for like a long time i've known her for so many years so i'm so excited to have her but it was interesting like owning your being in the look i don't put up with people's shit i don't put up especially when it comes to, i i've been in this industry not to you know a very long time but also there are certain things like that you know need to be checked and like if if whoever isn't doing it on set i'm not afraid to be like hi i just got off a series uh, that deals with a lot of weapons um you need to this is before the horrible thing with baldwin and and, and um that cinema photographer i literally made them on set shine because they weren't checking weapons and i was like you need to shine a flashlight through the barrel and make sure everyone's safe and they kind of looked at me like I was crazy and I was like, I don't know what to tell you. I've been on an action show for a very long time. And one of my mentors, James Bamford, he's a director, but he comes from stunt stunts and something he hammered home into me is that exact thing. Um, I don't know if that answered your question or where now I'm like, where was I going with this? But uh, yes, I did actually the wig at the end of the movie. I brought uh this wig with me and i was like listen if i'm gonna be in disguise and i wear this wig when i do nfts so the wig made it, it an appearance and they were like oh my gosh we're so happy you brought this wig this is awesome oh that's amazing so they were definitely open to like my ideas it's just a matter of knowing you know i'm not intimidated by them i think it's just a matter of being able to speak up murphy stop 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 being able to like speak up and say you know I, this is what i'd like to happen uh can you please get a flashlight like i want to check not just mine but everyone's um you know oh absolutely yeah because they're real weapons at the end of the day so yeah, yeah. 
But as someone, I've, I've followed your career since way back, obviously with Supernatural, and then obviously you went on to Arrow and now doing a lot of other projects, which is great to see. But something I really enjoyed in this film was seeing you hold your own with obviously an actor like Mel Gibson. Um, he's been around a long time, done a lot of movies, and it must have been a lot of fun for you to have that dynamic with him. And of course, really, hold, as I said, hold your own against him with this very intense back and forth between the two characters. I'm so excited to see this because I haven't seen it yet. Uh, but it was interesting when we were shooting. I look when I go on set and I'm in, and I'm in, I try and stay in character as much as I can while I'm there. Uh, but I don't, so it was interesting because I also, you know, you're there for the first time with these, with these actors and we're on set. I, I don't mean to come across standoffish or rude but my character doesn't let trust or like his character and so I definitely kept to my own uh while we were shooting and it, or kept I don't know like I just didn't want to really be around anyone because I felt like she was her own island in a way uh and so when we I met Mel everyone you know they were like oh we're gonna go for lunch and I was like I'm really sorry <laughs> To the director, you know, I was like, I'm not, I hope he has, I wrote him a note at the end, Mel, like, it was so nice meeting you. I'm trying to just like stay in, I try to stay in character as much as possible. Um, but so I don't really know. I kind of, it's almost like I, I don't mean to say black out, but kind of like while I'm in mid performance, I, if I've done the, yeah, it's like I, it's like all this, I all of a sudden wake up and, were wrapped for the day so i can't wait to see that scene <laughs> oh well it is a i can't wait for you to see it as well because it's a great scene and particularly as for you i thought it was a great opportunity to obviously make your character deeper and get this little bit of backstory in so it must have been a satisfying experience for you in that way as well i can imagine yeah absolutely and of course you mentioned checking the weapons and being no stranger to action so what was that like coming on to this film and that so did you do a lot of weaponry training or was it very much being thrown into the deep end because I know with a film like this maybe you don't have that time to uh you know have yeah so the good thing is um on on Arrow I mean and I continue like you know fight training uh jiu-jitsu Muay Thai and weapon training still um but I did weapon training and all of that kind of stuff when I was on Arrow. So when I came on to Agent Game, I was like, who's the stunt coordinator? Once I met the stunt coordinator, I was like, listen, you should use me because I know how to do this shit for real. Like, let's do some dope. And I actually made the trailer. This like, I do, I have my rifle and I, I don't know, do this like crazy spin. Uh, it's like for a second in the trailer, but he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dope. And then on the day I was like, I don't, yes, I would love rehearsal <clears throat> or I'd love to, like, let me know what I can do, but I know how to use weapons. I know how to like, let's do something dope. So we added like a little sprinkle here and there. Um, so they were definitely collaborative, which I love. And I love working with uh, Grant. He's an awesome director, Grant Johnson. And uh, Tyler Connie is an amazing producer and great guys. And they were totally open to, you know, my thoughts and feedback. And I love that collaboration. Awesome. And of course, again, another unique, I thought quite unique about this film, there's a lot of very tense scenes, but you're in these very confined settings, whether it be a car or a plane. So what, what's it like for you to have almost these very big moments in such small surroundings and, and, and when you're telling the story like this? That's a really good question. Um, I, well, <laughs> me in particular, I'm quite claustrophobic. Uh, and I, but I have to say, I actually like the fact that we were in such confined spaces because the character is trapped. It felt, I just sort of leaned into that. Like it was difficult for sure. Uh, I was really, you know, like just weird about it. And I think that maybe that came across uh, but it was, it was definitely tough. And I, let me just tell you, it was so hot in that plane. Oh my gosh, I was sweating. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> screw it, like, whatever. <laughs> this is what the character would be doing anyway. Um, so it was tough, but I think, that, I think that actually helped the suspense and it helped feel that much more real. Yeah, 100%. And on another note for a second, I, 
I know it's been a little while now since the CW decided not to move ahead with that Green Arrows and Cana Green Arrow and Canary show. But looking back, do you think they missed a trick there with obviously such a great female-led superhero show, or you're not too bothered? No, I don't. I say this in the most respectful, kind, realistic way. I don't. It's you've really, we've really, really milked that cow, like, come on, <laughs> it's just, you evolve, you grow, you, hopefully, I love learning, so I'm, you know, I love acting, but I also, I want to do more, you know, stepping back into, I started in features, stepping back into features, now I'm directing, I'm directing this movie with Marina Studios, um, producing, uh, called Daddy Issues, and just this, like, and I'm writing, and this, like, creative side of me, I'm, really tapping into and I've never really had time to because I've just been acting and I love acting m my whole life I just want to grow and not that I wouldn't have loved for the show to go because I loved working with everyone but let's do something different let's say shake some shit up like we know about the superheroes we've been there what's next it's almost like how there was vampires and then there was like you know the twilight thing and now it's like Superheroes have been cool and they are cool for, sorry, my dog sneezed for like a decade and there will forever be cool. But now let's go to like aliens again, or I don't know, monsters, things evolve. And then maybe we'll go to space with aliens and monsters. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fair to say that obviously you played that character for such a long time and it got to a point, point where you're playing different versions of the same character. So it's not been hard for you to really separate yourself from that. It's almost a happy separation to move on from, from the character really. Yeah, it's like, it's not to say that she's gone or that, you know, I would happily go on any of those shows. I love those people. They're my family. I I'm, have so much gratitude, but I think at some point you got to let some good, that's why they say good things don't last forever. Like you grow and you evolve and you move on. But it's so amazing when I run into contact with these, with my family, when I see them at conventions or I see them at other places and it's like, oh my gosh, I ah. It's almost like it feels like the cast of Friends probably felt like they were probably that's how tight we were. So I miss them. I love them, but they're all killing it, too. So I'm glad for them. And as this, this is life, we're just figuring it out. <laughs> Absolutely. And I know you said, obviously, you're going on to direct. Obviously, you did direct an episode of Arrow. So can you maybe tell us a little bit more about what you are planning to do behind the camera? I know you mentioned the film you're working on, but maybe you'd like if there's anything else you can share about that. Yeah, one? yeah. Absolutely. So during the, I've been writing and directing during the pandemic, I actually got the, the rights to this book franchise called uh, Beauty is the Beast. And I wrote the pilot. However, I did not take it out or shop it around because I, to be honest with you, it's pretty dark. It's very genre like Tarantino, uh, Hitchcock kind of way. Um, and I think we needed a little bit of light. We need lightness right now after everything we've been through. And, and I had got hired in 2019 to direct this movie, Daddy Issues, which is a, a coming of age raunchy comedy about these three women in their early thirties who are trying to grow the fuck up, but can't seem to get their shit together because of the dysfunctional relationships that they've had with their fathers. I have three fathers, which the world doesn't know. One is no longer here in human form may he rest in peace but it's a three-hander hilarious raunchy comedy and I was like to the girls who wrote it I was like ladies when I actually had to fight for this I put I did like a 50 page deck because I'm using setting Los Angeles and kind of showcasing it you making it feel like a, a character in itself and I that was part of it my deck and going in and being like ladies you wrote a three-hander with these three girls and the irony is it's like I'm this girl these three girls wrapped up in one okay <laughs> and it's hilarious it's heartwarming it's moving it's all of the things and I am so excited to get to tell the story um I so aside from writing the pilot I shot and directed a short that I had written on Amer as a spoof on American politics the year before. Uh, what's interesting about that is I, I think I wrote that two years ago or it, it, that was before the whole Biden Trump situation before the election. Like, anyways, it'll come out. I'm in the middle of editing. My editor's gone out of town and then, you know, within the pandemic and the lockdowns and the craziness, I will finish it, but in good time. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I'm very excited for both of those. And I know you mentioned you've worked in NFTs and you're a big gamer. So are there any maybe video game franchises you would be interested? I know. Yes, they- thank you. <laughs> Call of Duty. Hello. I am a huge fan. They know it. I love motion capture. I also just did agent Ga- or not agent game, uh, hidden agenda with uh which is a video game a couple years ago where i played a cop but call of duty is the game i play i love it um i like mass effect i like halo i like radiation island which is on the mac um but that's i don't know i just love video games i used to play duke nukem uh and i mean back to like lemmings but that's like you know not a first person shooter game. I don't know what it is about the first person shooter games, but I love them. I used to love Mortal Kombat, Sub Zero, The Thumb Blaster, His Fatality, my favorite go to. Um, why am I not in these movies? <laughs> Let well, the people know. Let's just put it out in their universe. Hello. They're making enough of them now. So, so fingers crossed. But go, going back to this film, obviously. CIA project like this one in terms of research did did you find that you needed to do a lot for this film or obviously with it being a fictional story was the script well yeah I I mean for me as an actor I always will do script analysis and backstory and create a character research but also figuring out why she is the way she is more like psychology related it's almost like dissecting a character in a reverse way like, why would she be like this? Because this happened, must have happened in her childhood. I've been in a lot of therapy my whole life. I'm a big believer of it. It actually really helps me. And it, I'm going to let, maybe I'm not, fine. I'll share this little secret as an actor. It helps knowing I can go to my therapist sometimes and being like, so why would a character do this? She's like, oh, probably because X, Y, and Z happened in their childhood. Uh, so yes, I always try to make them layered and filled and rich as possible. Oh, that's so interesting to hear. And just a final question for you, Katie. I know you've just got out of a big franchise like Arrow, but w- without getting into spoilers, the way this film ends, I feel like the door is very much open for more stories down the line. So is that something you'd like to come back to? And have you got any ideas where you'd maybe like to take this character next? Oh, yeah. Um, I think that hers. I don't think her story has been told. I think she's got a very interesting story. I also don't know if we, I don't know if we trust her necessarily. Uh, I think it would be awesome if I directed the second movie um, and Grant and Tyler, obviously Grant would be there and Tyler come on as a producer, but I think it'd be really cool uh, to direct the sequel. And also, I mean, yes, of course, also be in it, but maybe it's like Grant and I co-direct. I don't know. Well, I'd love to see it and I'd love to see you come back and kick some more ass. So Me too. It's been such a pleasure, Katie. As I said, I've been following your career for, for a long time, going back to Supernatural. And to see you now move on from Arrow and get these movie roles, it's, it's a really cool thing to see. So thank you again for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that.